Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out on either May 31st or June 1st, 2022. And I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy this week if I could buy just one book? Let's go ahead and start off the content for this video first by taking a look back at my pick from two weeks ago, which was House of Slaughter, issue number six. And the question remains, was it a worthy and worthwhile book to be my just one book pick of the week? And the answer is... Yeah, sure. It was good. I enjoyed it. There wasn't anything else two weeks ago that blew me away that I was just kind of like, oh, you know, I, I, this is absolutely like uh, should have been my pick of the week, if not House of Slaughter. So yeah, House of Slaughter was a good pick for me. I like Something is Killing the Children a lot. This is in the world of Something is Killing the Children. Um, this book might have suffered a little bit for me in two ways. One, uh, it's not Something is Killing the Children, but it is in the world of Something is Killing the Children, and Something is Killing the Children is so good and I like it so much that anything that is in the world that doesn't quite live up to the high standard that has been set for me by Something's Killing the Children is going to have a hard time uh, being a hit as far as I'm concerned. But I was really interested in uh, what they set up and that's the other problem that this book might have. It's the first issue in a new story arc. So it's new characters, it's a new situation, it's new ideas. They have to set up a lot of new things, which doesn't necessarily make for a fantastic single issue of a comic book. It makes for the good opening you know, act of a new storyline. So in that regards, I enjoyed it. I'm interested in seeing where this new arc is going to go. The new characters are interesting to me. The new circumstances are interesting to me. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. I'm going to stick with it. And it was definitely a worthy and worthwhile just one book pick as far as I was concerned. If you read House of Slaughter issue number six, I'd like to know what you thought of it down in the comments. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the books that are coming out this week. This week, I'm going to have four honorable mentions for you and then my just one book pick of the week. I want to start off by letting you know some of the books that I won't be mentioning that are in my poll this week. One of the book is uh, A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance, issue number eight. This is just a, a story that I just... Uh, I'm really, I just have to know where the story is going and how it's going to end. It's just, it's under my skin and I'm really, really liking it. In addition, we have the Batman 2022 annual that's coming out this week. It's very uh, Ghostmaker uh, focused. So if you like Ghostmaker, this is a good one for you. Annuals are generally a little bit meh for me, but I like Batman and I'm just kind of sticking with it for now. So I'm picking up the annual just to read and check out. In addition, this week has The Nice House on the Lake, issue number nine coming out. Oh man, The Nice House on the Lake is so good. If you've been watching these videos, you know how much I love The Nice House on the Lake. I had to fight very hard. I had to fight myself very hard not to make it an honorable mention this week but uh, because I love it so much. But uh, it is definitely something I am going to be pulling. But... The honorable mentions that I do want to mention uh, are about to come, and the first one is a book called Triskele. I think that's how you pronounce it. Triskele. Uh, issue number one from Scout Comics. Here's the description. When young Alec Ellis is granted a magical gift on Samhain night, the scales of power on the island of Albion are inadvertently shifted. Now, together with his friends, he is about to embark on a dangerous journey that shall decide the fate of the entire kingdom. Set in a medieval world populated by characters and events from Celtic myths and legends, Triskele is a visually stunning journey into the world of once forgotten oral traditions. It is an epic story of courage and friendship imbued with fascinating characters and steeped in the magic of Welsh and Irish folklore. Okay. Everything you need to know was in that description. This was actually a pretty great description because it tells me everything I need to know. If you're interested in Celtic myths and legends, if you are interested in uh, an epic story of courage and friendship imbued with fascinating characters and steeped in the magic of Welsh and Irish folklore, well, 
then this is a book for you this week. It sounds like it could be cool. Uh, and from the art on the cover, uh, I mean, there's only the one cover for it, and the art on the cover is pretty great as well. So this would be one that if the 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 concept, I guess, appeals to you, uh, pop it open, look at the art inside. If the art also appeals to you, maybe consider picking up this book this week. The next book I want to mention to you is another new book called Never Ender, issue number one of a six-issue limited series from Behemoth Comics. Here's the description. The year is 2x19, and due to break breakthroughs in artificial accelerants, mankind has taken to the stars. At the edge of civilization, the dominant sport is a civilized sword duel to the death. The rules are simple. The duel must be agreed upon by both crows. Crows, I guess, are people who are living in this world. A time and a place must also be agreed upon. Both duelists must acknowledge each other. Only two crows may duel at a time. A crow must have direct contact to his weapon. And once the kill is confirmed, the match is over. In the city of riots, Merrick, a, a disaffected terrestrial youth, fights for his survival. Smash the city, smash the state, burn it all, escape to space. Okay, so this sounds like it could be an interesting world uh, where people duel for whatever reason. We have uh, Merrick who wants to, you know, burn it all down. Um, uh, this might be interesting. This might be worth checking out. This is another one that kind of is kept catching my attention a little bit by the cover art. Uh, seems like it could be a, a cool, fun story to check out. If you're looking for something new and out there a little bit to check out this week, this might be a good one because, um, I don't know, uh, who doesn't want to watch people sword duel to the death? <laughs> All right, my next honorable we'll mention this week is Avengers Forever, issue number six from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Introducing the invincible Vibranium Man. On an alternate Earth where Wakanda has been crushed from existence and where the Black Panther is a forgotten legend, one man known as T'Challa will forge a new legacy for himself and perhaps even hope for a planet uh, and have perhaps even hope for a planet caught in the grips of God slaughtering King Killmonger. Okay, that description kind of fell apart for me at least a little bit in the end, but basically all you need to know is that it is an alternate world where T'Challa becomes Vibranium Man, not the Black Panther. So there's some spec there, although I have to say the spec on it is a little bit weak as far as I am concerned. It is not a new character, it is an alternate reality T'Challa. We all know T'Challa, so um, the only thing that this, 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 that only spec potential that this has is in the character Vibranium Man. Now, obviously, T'Challa is Black Panther in the Marvel Universe that we all know very well. Is it possible that our Marvel Universe could have a Vibranium Man who's not T'Challa at some point? Maybe. Is it possible that this T'Challa could somehow come into the, the main universe as Vibranium Man at some point? Maybe. Uh, these are all big maybes, but probably not mm, very possible. There's probably really only room for one T'Challa in the Marvel Universe proper, and I think our T'Challa is going to be Black Panther. So this is something that I felt like I had to mention because it's a thing, you know, it's T'Challa as a new character, Vibranium Man. Um, so it's definitely at the very least noteworthy. Whether or not I would suggest running out and buying it, Mm, is up to you. I'm not going to bother picking it up. But if you're a big Black Panther fan, if you're a big T'Challa fan, or if you just want to just make sure you don't miss out on this potential spec, uh, you might consider picking up Avengers Forever, issue number six. My next honorable mention is Miles Morales Spider-Man, issue number 38 from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Next stop, The Empire of the Spider. Miles and Schiff's hunt through the multiverse lands them back in Brooklyn? It's not the home they know, but the Empire of the Spider. 
a timeline where Miles' clone, Selim, is victorious. And the only thing standing in the evil Spider-Man's way is a rebellion led by General Genki and a very grown-up and extremely badass Captain Billy. Okay. This is an interesting one this week. Captain Billy is Miles Morales' younger sister, but in, an, in, a, in a different multiverse version of. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, the Marvel Universe gave birth, literally, as a baby, to Miles Morales' baby sister, Billy Morales. Uh, and in this reality, Billy is all grown up. And um, I believe she has a name like Spider Slayer or something like that. Uh, she is a superhero all her own in this multiverse universe. Um, and now Miles is going to come across a grown-up version of his baby sister. And I picked up the first appearance of Billy Morales when she was showed up, you know, when she was born uh, on the pages of Miles Morales' Spider-Man. Because I thought to myself at the time, they don't create little sisters to Miles Morales unless they have a plan for that character. They don't just do it for no reason. They do it because they have something planned down the line. So I picked up that book. So at least an element of that plan is coming to fruition in the pages of Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number 38. Um, this character, Billy Morales, is on the cover of several different uh, covers for this book. Um, so it's definitely uh, a lot of focus is on Billy Morales. So I think this is a book definitely worth checking out. Uh, Miles Morales is just about the hottest, like, newest thing out there. Um, and, and you can't ignore the potential... Uh, reverberations that could have for other characters in the title. So I am absolutely going to be picking up this book this week um, because I think the spec there is strong and I think that there is a lot of potential for Miles Morales in the future both in comic books and on the big screen, the small screen, the everything. Um, and I think part of Miles Morales' story will end up focusing on his family and everything around him, and that includes, eventually, Billy Morales. So I think that there's some there there, and I highly recommend you consider picking it up this week. All right, that's all of my honorable mentions. That brings me to the last book that I want to mention this week, which is the one book that I would buy this week if I could buy just one book. And that book is... The Closet, issue number one of a three-issue limited series from Image Comics. Here's the description. A tale of existential familial horror by James Tynan IV and Gavin Fullerton. Tom is moving cross-country with his family and dragging the past along with them. His son, Jamie, is seeing monsters in the bedroom closet and will not let them go. That's it. That's the entire description. The description doesn't give you much, but first thing I'll say about this book is I'm sure some of you are kind of rolling your eyes and saying, Jeff, another James Tyne in the book, James Tyne in the fourth book for you to pick for your just one book pick. It's like, it's like, is this the just one book or is this just whatever Tyne book comes out this week? And I acknowledge and understand if you were like, oh, come on, Jeff, you can't just always pick James Tyne in the fourth books, but he is just so good. And it is the one book that I would buy if I could buy just one book. So, of course, the James Tyne in the fourth factor of it is a big one for me. It's also a number one book of a new title. So you put the number one with the James Tyne in the fourth, you've got something that you just have to pay attention to. Now, this book is um, part of James Tynan IV's Substack. Um, just in case you don't know what Substack is, Substack is a, uh, it's a, it's a website, I guess, where you can sign up to receive newsletters from different writers. And different writers and different genres of writing throughout all of existence 
uh, are on Substack, but there, about a year ago, there was a big push from a bunch of comic book creators to move to Substack to be, for that to be the place where they provide information from. They also have paid subscriptions where they provide um, new and original content for their subscribers. I, of course, am a subscriber of James Tynan IV's Substack. And this book, The Closet, was one of the original comic books that he premiered on his Substack. So, I have read all three issues of The Closet already, and I will tell you, it is fantastic. It is so good. It is not a typical comic book story. There are no superheroes. It is, in a way I would say, is not even a typical horror-themed comic book, comic book from James Tyler IV. Yes, uh, Jamie, uh, Tom's son, is seeing monsters in his bedroom closet. And that's frightening and very traumatic for Jamie. But there are other things going on in this title. I'm not going to get into them specifically because you know how I am sensitive about spoilers. But there, this book, this, these three issues of The Closet broke my heart and made me, they, it was sad and, and beautiful. And it is infrequent that any media, film, television, comic books, books, music, anything, makes me feel what the closet made me feel. I connected with these characters so deeply and personally, frankly, and I sympathized with these characters and I also wanted to scream and yell at these characters. I was so invested and so appreciated the fact that James Tynion IV told a story that took me on a journey, that took me out of my own skin for, for a short amount of time and put me into somebody else's experience for good or for bad. And I was able to, you know, I guess kind of learn something about myself, about these characters, about life. I know I'm describing it in a very sappy way right now, but the reason I'm doing it is because it is heartfelt. The Closet is so good. Please do yourself a favor. I don't know what the spec potential of The Closet is going to be. I don't really think that it could be adapted into a full-length feature film, and it's definitely not going to be adapted into a television show. So I don't know what the spec potential is right there, but the read is a must. I strongly recommend that you all pick up The Closet, issues number one, two, and three, because it is just frankly, bottom line, a fantastic story from James Tynan IV. And that is the reason why The Closet is my just one book pick for this week. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you like my content, if you like this video, please, likes are appreciated by me. I could use as many of them as I can get. In addition, if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. As always, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.